Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 20th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Mary Esther, Florida. Today I wrote up a quick uh, post on how to deal with uh, Linux systems that are using the U-Boot uh, bootloader. U-Boot is an alternative to CRUB. It's often used for embedded devices, switches and the like. So if you ever find yourself like I did to have to reset a password on a system using U-Boot instead of up, you may find the post helpful. Also, quick reminder here, the reason I did this was for a NetOptics uh, matrix switch that I uh, got used at a good price and well, it still held logs back to 2008. In this case, the logs also included passwords and such. So before you resell devices like this, uh, please go ahead and uh, reset them. And today was Oracle's critical patch update or CPU as Oracle abbreviates it for the quarter. This quarter Oracle fixed a total of 520 different vulnerabilities across all of its products. One vulnerability in particular stuck out and that was Log4j. I did a quick search on their summary and found 110 mentions of Log4j. Of course, there are less vulnerabilities like this sometimes log4j is just mentioned as a comment or such but i would say it's fair to guess that there are probably about 80 to 100 vulnerabilities that are log4j related not all of them are critical based on the exploitability of the individual vulnerabilities but for example there is a 9.8 cvss score vulnerability related to log4j in oracle's healthcare repository so if you use any kind of Oracle products, this includes Java, this includes uh, things like MySQL, then uh, take a look at uh, this update and see if any of the products that you're using needs patching. And CryptoCoin wallet MetaMask published an advisory stating that if you're using their iOS app and you enabled the iCloud app data backup, then the seat for your cryptocurrency wallet will be stored inside Apple's iCloud. Now, apparently uh, this uh, backup is password protected. So an attacker first needs to be able to fish your iCloud credentials. And then the attacker needs to be able to brute force the password used to encrypt the data. But apparently there are enough people out there who still don't believe in two-factor authentication for iCloud and like to live dangerous by using weak passwords for their crypto coin wallet so that may get your crypto coin stolen apparently that has happened a couple times already in metamask's case and users reported losing upwards of half a million dollars in some of these phishing scams and Microsoft announced that it will start disabling SMB version 1 on Windows Home. Now, this is Windows 11 Home, and it just started disabling it in the Insider Build Edition of Windows 11 Home. Why is this big news? Well, this is actually the last operating system that still had it enabled. Uh, Microsoft has been sort of following a multi-year strategy uh, to disable with SMB version 1 after, of course, all the issues with this old protocol and has started with the servers where uh, that of course had the highest impact and now Windows 11 Home was the last version of Windows that still had it enabled. The next step will be to actually remove any support from the operating system. So that means removing DLLs and such that are supporting SMB version one. If you're interested, Microsoft also maintains a list of third-party products that are still using SMB version one. So you could scan that to see if there's anything on that list that you may still be using. 
And Lenovo did uh, publish some important firmware updates for its products and uh, these BIOS or UEFI updates are removing a number of back doors that according to Lenovo were left accidentally inside the production version of uh, this firmware. So if you're using any Lenovo products, make sure that your BIOS is up to date. In order to exploit any of these vulnerabilities, an attacker would need access to the device and would need to be able to execute code on the device in order to then, for example, alter some of the bias settings. These kind of vulnerabilities are not often exploited, but they can lead to very crippling compromises because they can be very difficult to detect and to uh, remediate. Then we got some new entries to CISA's ever-expanding list of already exploited vulnerabilities. Probably noteworthy is a print spooler approach escalation vulnerability that uh, was patched by Microsoft in February. Also, the Simpra cross-site scripting vulnerability. I mentioned uh, some attacks against Simpra yesterday and uh, WhatsApp VoIP stack buffer overflow vulnerability. Now, this one goes back to 2019, so I hope you updated WhatsApp since then. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.